I bought a ThinkPad T470P off eBay for only £70, but what's wrong with it? And can we make it better than the Fable T480 many people talk about? Let's take a look. This ThinkPad in particular came with an i7 7820HQ CPU, 8GB of single channel DDR4 RAM and Nvidia 940MX graphics. So in theory, this should be able to handle a bit of light gaming. The i7 7820HQ model is actually quite hard to find on eBay, with mostly 7700HQ models showing up. But in terms of performance, it doesn't really make a huge difference, with only a slightly higher clock frequency. I guess it's nice to have the maxed out model, and for only £70, it's a bargain. One thing I found interesting is the CPU still supports Windows 11, whilst the other CPUs in the T470P range do not. No idea why this is the case. Anyways, enough rambling, let's take a look at this little beast of his laptop from 2017. The T470P is a well-rounded workstation laptop catered towards those who need a bit more. The model I have originally cost in the range of £1400 to £1600, which is mad considering the price I bought it for 7 years later. The condition mine came in was pretty good with minor scuffs and scratches as expected. There were a few small cracks around the fingerprint sensor, but they were barely visible so it didn't really bother me. With every used ThinkPad, you should always give it a thorough clean since you don't know what the previous user was doing with it. I used some antibacterial laptop wipes to get rid of most of the grime off the outside. Display looked in good shape and the keyboard looked used but fully functional. The reason I got this for so cheap was it came with no storage, no battery and the trackpad was a bit stiff which made it hard to click. These issues can be rectified quite easily so we should be able to transform this little beast and give it a new lease on life. Turning on the ThinkPad, we're greeted with a few error codes. This is probably due to a dead CMOS, which shouldn't be too hard to replace. Into the BIOS, we can see all of the information there is, including the CPU and RAM. As there's no storage, we'll need to put in an SSD to boot into Windows. With a Phillips head screwdriver and a couple screws later, the bottom casing comes off. Now we can see all there is to the ThinkPad. There's an extra slot for RAM and the dead CMOS we need to replace. The storage caddy is connected via SATA and in it is an M.2 slot. Not sure why they went with this method, but I guess in 2017, M.2 drives were less common so there was an option to put in a SATA based SSD if required. A few annoying screws later, we have the storage caddy. I picked up a relatively cheap 512GB NVMe SSD for only £25 which should be more than enough for the OS and files. In that goes and back into the ThinkPad. Let's put all that back together and put my Windows 11 installation media and turn it on. The boot manager recognises the USB stick and into Windows it goes. Strangely, it didn't recognise any product key straight away. Perhaps this model was shipped without an OS, which I have to say was a smart move, since you can save quite a bit on an otherwise free operating system. Anyways, installation was easy and Windows 11 started right up. The setup was as mundane as you could imagine, but at least it made it through. It did take a while for updates and a lot to download though. After a few minutes, we're into Windows 11. First thing I do with every used device was check Task Manager, just in case. I noticed no drivers were installed, so I installed Anova's Vantage software to do its job. All that out of the way, let's see how this ThinkPad can run. First experience was quite pleasant. Everything loaded up quickly and there was hardly any slowdowns to account of. Doing basic tasks like note taking or watching videos was like any other laptop. It worked very well. I actually wrote most of the script on the T470P, the keys felt like a slender ThinkPad keyboard, it was a pleasure to type on. I'd go as far as to say it's one of the best laptop keyboards there is. Personal take, but I'm sure many can agree. One thing I did notice was it did get very warm when on my lap. This is probably due to the thermal paste probably dried out or it's clogged with dust. Now doing the testing, the laptop performed pretty well but there was one hindrance that kept annoying me. The trackpad. It seemed the trackpad buttons were completely stiff with no audible click. Guess this is a good segue to the disassembly portion of the video. Here we got the laptop, a spare trackpad I've repurposed from an old ThinkPad, a CMOS battery and of course a screwdriver. First I took out the keyboard, unscrewing it and to be careful not to tear the ribbon cables. This had to be done first as it would make it easier to take out the motherboard to access the trackpad. Once that's out, we can unscrew the bottom panel and take out all the various connectors on the motherboard. Some were quite finicky so I had to be careful. Now I start unscrewing all the screws on the motherboard, the heatsink fan assembly and take out the Wi-Fi card. The storage caddy also had to come out. With everything out and loose, the motherboard popped right out. Looks quite a compact board for what it is. I kept the RAM in as I'll be upgrading that later. With the motherboard out, you can see four screws holding down the trackpad. Unscrewing the lot, the trackpad is finally out and we can now proceed with the replacement. Before replacement, I cleaned out the dust that was chilling underneath, placing the new trackpad in place, feeding through the ribbon cable and screwing it back in, we have accomplished what we sought out to do. 
Now all that's left is put back everything in place. First the motherboard, screws, various connectors and Wi-Fi. The fan was quite clean to begin with which led me to believe that it was clean before shipping. Nonetheless, I gave it a quick brush to get rid of all the dust around the fins. The old thermal paste was dried out so I gave it a quick wipe and applied some new paste onto the CPU and GPU. Next, the storage cuddy goes back in. Since there's an extra dim slot, I put an extra stick of 8GB to a total of 16. This should make it feel a lot snappier in games and day to day use. The power button was quite recessed before and didn't turn on the laptop so I made sure this separate board was screwed in place. In total, the overall replacement was around half an hour and very easy with virtually the same Phillips head screws used for every component. To confirm everything works, I connected to power to see if, if it boots. And yep, looks good. Into Windows, everything works as expected. Almost forgot, let's put in a battery so the ThinkPad doesn't have to be plugged in 24-7. Let's put the back panel back on, screw the keyboard in place and see if this transformation was worthwhile. Time to see if everything works as usual. The T470P recognises two 8GB sticks to a total of 16 running at 2400 MHz. The specs on this thing are no slouch. Back in the day, it would have been top tier. In Cinebench 2024, we saw a multi-core score of 199, which is fine. I hope to see a little bit more, but you really wouldn't notice any difference coming from a more powerful machine when doing normal tasks. The GPU in the T470P does work well, but your mileage may vary. Many gaming laptops around the time of this ThinkPad use the 940MX graphics. Even though I wouldn't classify this as a gaming GPU, it can still play a few lower end titles. In Minecraft, it actually surprised me how well it ran, with it hitting around 180fps on average with medium settings. Games like Minecraft will run great on the T470P. Same can't be said with Fortnite, on performance mode averaging a measly 29fps. This is most likely due to Fortnite being a more GPU intensive game, whereas Minecraft being more CPU bound. The CPU does feature 4 cores and 8 threads which would have helped. This laptop wasn't intended for gaming and as games require more than 2GB of VRAM it will suffer in modern titles. Still, I think it did decent for a laptop of this price and age. So, if you remember at the start of the video, I mentioned the T480, arguably one of the most popular ThinkPads due to its small footprint and easy upgradability. The T470P is essentially the same with its upgradability but features much more powerful components. The only drawback be battery life, but if you're after a cheap little workhorse then I'd be inclined to go for the T470P. Another small drawback is finding a model that supports Windows 11. If you're a Windows 10 enjoyer, then no worries, but finding a model that supports Windows 11 might be a bit tricky. I got quite lucky since the CPU supports it, but if you are looking to find a way, there's many methods like installing Windows 11 in a supported machine and slapping that drive in the laptop. Dedicated graphics on the T480 is like finding a needle in a haystack and go for absurd money. For the one I picked up being £70 with a replacement trackpad that would have cost £10, storage for £25, battery for £20 and RAM for £10, altogether I've got a pretty solid workstation ThinkPad for only £135 which is great value for money. So I'll be the first to say it, if you're looking for performance, don't get a T480, get this instead. My final verdict on the T470P is quite positive. It does everything I want a laptop to do. Yes, it's not the best for gaming, but if you're after that, then don't get a ThinkPad. It can get warm up times, but that's likely due to the beefy CPU plus GPU combo, respective to its time. Overall, I'm quite happy how it all turned out and hope it'll last for many years to come. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for future videos. Leave a comment what you thought about the T470P, and is it valid? I'll be replying to all comments. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next one.